podcast, brand new, uh, just a few weeks. And it's called SideGigCentral.com, and it's on side gigs and the gig economy. A fantastic website. Check it out. But we've brought her to our program so you can learn more. She's already classified the three known areas, unscientific, but the three known areas for gigs, assets, plug and play, and sweat equity. Now, Elaine is going to offer you her very best, I don't know, top 10, top 12 tips for being productive and and uh, making money in, in gig economy, Absolutely. in the gig economy. Absolutely. I think the, the, the first tip that I would give anyone who wants to start a side gig is choose something that you're really passionate about or you're really good at, mm-hmm. right? You don't want to put in all this extra time and effort into something that you don't love, mm-hmm. right? Because nobody's got time for that, right? Right. right. <laughs> it's just, you, you just don't. So really just hone in on what are you really good at? What do you love? It could be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles YouTube channel. That's great. You go ahead and do that. But make sure it's something that you're passionate about. The second part of it, I would say, is make sure that you are looking at it as a business as early on as you possibly can. And the reason why I say that is because we get caught up with just being busy, right? Or we're, we're putting in more money into our gig than we're actually taking out. Like what is our bottom line, bottom line profit? So treating it as a business or a small business as early on as possible, you know, setting up a separate bank account for your earnings, maybe setting up a separate LLC for your earnings, you know, so when tax time comes, it's not a disaster for you to, you know, figure out what you owe and Uncle Sam is knocking on your door. Um, So, yeah, so I would definitely treat it like a small business as early on as you possibly can. Uh, my, My next tip would be for you to maybe look beyond maybe some of the obvious ones. Right. And when I say obvious ones, I'm referring to like some of the plug and play gigs that are out there. Like, are you a phenomenal singer? Like, how could you leverage that talent in in a different way? I just had a stand up comedian on my show uh, two weeks ago. That episode will be coming out later on. But she found out she was really great at comedy writing and then she started going out and doing comedy games. so just i would say kind of expand your horizons a little bit and really just again going back to kind of tip number one what are you really good at and maybe right. go beyond like the surface like quick again like what is what is your purpose with the side gig if it's just like hey i want to you know throw money in a till for vacation yeah, I would need to pay this credit card right away. I go back to the credit card example a lot. Um, you know, really know what your focus is. But if it's maybe if it's something broader, like eventually you want to leave your nine to five, or you want to build something more sustainable for your for your life for your family, um, th- that those are all kind of like considerations that you should definitely look at. Um, the next is not a very popular one. But I would say that you need to uh, employ the advice or the professional advice of an accountant or a tax professional, right? You're, uh, and I will use Rideshare as an example for this, year after year, especially working at Lyft and working with drivers, I saw it every single year, they would get the 1099 in the mail and they would pass out and faint. They were like, I, I didn't know. I didn't. They didn't save any money for the taxes that they were going to have to pay. There's no withholding tax or tax savings plan for you on any of these platforms. So you have to be responsible or just cognizant enough for you to actually start saving some of that, that money, start putting it away. Um, so definitely take a look at that. 